Hello everyone. So this video is going to tackle our syllabus for the class. The syllabus is the most important piece of paper that you get in my classroom because it tells you everything that you need to know about the class and how to go about doing the class so that you can perform well. This year is kind of a different year. Um, I am preparing for every possible situation. So I have a syllabus that will tackle traditional face-to-face it will tackle uh, virtual at home learning, but I also went ahead and put hybrid in there in the event that we have to go to a hybrid schedule. And I'm pretty sure that I even added in things so that you can continue your work in the event that we have a zombie apocalypse or Bigfoot takes over the planet. So I wanted to make sure that you were prepared in every possible way. So I'm going to share my screen with the syllabus and we're just gonna walk through the syllabus together, talk a little bit about what you need to do, how you can prepare so that you can be successful. If you have any questions about the syllabus, I'll tell you how you can go about asking those as well. So let me pull up my syllabus. Okay, so everybody should see the syllabus over here um, on my screen. So I'm really excited about this year. AMP is probably one of my favorite classes to teach because I just think that it's wonderful. It's something that you can use whether you decide to, to use it in a professional setting, um, but you would use it one day with your own families. Um, we encourage students who are interested in pursuing a career in the medical field, uh, whether it be as a physician, a uh, nurse, nurse practitioner, physical therapist, dentist, we encourage students to take AMP uh, because you will see it when you get in college. So I do have a few classroom rules and my rules have changed a little bit. I'm gonna go over the face-to-face -face rules first and I'm going over these in case we have a new student that comes in or a student who joined the class a little bit later than everyone else. So I wanted to go over those classroom rules with you and then we're gonna talk about virtual and distance learning rules because because um, in the event we have to go to that, or if you're one of these non-traditional students, you'll know it's expected of you. Um, so the first thing is you need to bring your own materials to class each day. Um, living in the, the world with COVID right now is just frowned upon for students to share any of their supplies. So I'm asking students to please make sure that you come to class prepared with your own pen and pencil, your own binder, um, your, you know, own colored pencils, whatever supplies that I request, which we'll look at in just a few minutes, so that you do not borrow from a fellow student. In the event that you maybe walk out of the house and don't have a pencil or a pen, or you need some paper, just raise your hand and ask me. I keep some of those supplies to the side. I don't mind helping you out from time to time, but I would rather you use mine than use someone else's. Um, normally, I have a pretty flexible about moving around the room, you know, as you need to, you can get up and sharpen your pencil, things like that. But because, once again, we're having to practice social distancing, I'm going to ask that you do not move around the room unless you've raised your hand and have been given permission. So you need to stay in your seat, um, don't get up, don't wander around, not even to go to the trash can. If you need to throw away something, just ball it up, put it there on your, your desk, and when you go to leave, you can drop it in the garbage garbage can on your way out the door. Um, because we're trying to limit the amount of touching your face, your hands, things like that, I'm not allowing students to eat or drink in my room. Normally I'm a little bit more lenient about that, but because of the fact that we have to be very careful, there will be no eating or drinking, even water in the classroom. Um, we're asking that you stay in the classroom for the whole period, um, and I put this in here because um, I have students sometimes who want to wander and go to the bathroom every day at a certain time or need to go to the library or to the you know, counselor's office. Um, once you come in my room, you're mine. And we don't have a, a long period of time together. We have a lot to learn. So I don't allow students to leave my classroom unless they give me a pass. At the beginning of the semester, you are given two passes and um, each nine weeks, you're given two passes, so four for the whole um, semester. And you are allowed to leave the classroom twice each nine weeks. Those can be used to go to the bathroom. They can be used to go to the counselor, the library, uh, the cafeteria, wherever it is that you may need to go, you can give me a pass. Now, 
Now, I do reward students for not using their pass. If you manage to go all nine weeks without having to give up a pass, you get 10 bonus points that you can add on any assignment but your exam. And that's kind of a reward for staying with me because I know that it can be tough and sometimes we want to get up and go stretch our legs. Masks. Uh, we will follow mask protocol as determined by North Pike High School, which means that you're supposed to, I think administration said you're going to wear a mask in the hallways, changing from class to class, and when we're in the common areas like the courtyard, the cafeteria, things like that. I do have um, one procedure about masks, which we will talk about in a few minutes, but um, I, I do ask that you follow the directions on the mask, okay? Um, let's just get used to them, put them on your face, and hopefully all this will be over with soon and we won't ever have to wear them again. Um, I do ask you to be conscientious of one another's personal belongings, their personal boundaries, and also practice good hygiene. Um, that means hand washing when you need to, covering your coughs and sneezes, using hand sanitizer um, that's available for you. And then last but not least, be respectful. And that's respectful to me, respectful to one another, and respectful to your surroundings, the classroom. Um, I usually have no problems with my students because we just have an understanding from the beginning. I will treat you like a young adult that you are if you'll treat me like the professional that I am. And we'll have a good working relationship um, together and we'll have a successful school semester. Now, I do have a few classroom rules for virtual learning or distance learning. I'm going to ask everyone to listen to these, whether you're doing traditional or non-traditional. Um, because in the event that we have to go to a distance learning or hybrid situation, I want you to be prepared. So we're going to use proper etiquette um, when we're in an online environment. That means that we need to watch our offensive comments. Sometimes when we get online, we tend to kind of let our guard down. And something that we would never say to someone's face, we'll say it in the online classroom. Also, we're not going to text talk. Whenever you need to email me or you need to comment, we're not going to use abbreviated text messaging um, words. We're going to use real English, okay? So once again, think about as you're talking to someone who's a professional and you want to make sure that you appear as professional as well. Um, although it's an online environment, we do expect you to address your instructor. Or I expect you to address me just like you would in the face-to-face -face classroom. Sometimes whenever we uh, text or email a teacher when it's not in the normal traditional face-to-face -face environment, sometimes we can be a little lax on our uh, respect and manner. So just remember that we need to keep those good manners and that we need to at all times be respectful. Um, discussion boards and comment sections in our Google Classroom, um, they can be read by the whole class. So please don't use these areas to discuss personal issues with me, like if you have a question about a grade or something like that. You do that in an email. Um, if you want to chit chat with one of your friends, do that on text messaging, not in the classroom. And then uh, one of the last things that I have is we're going to do Google Meet and Zoom sessions um, for those who are virtual learning, but also those of you who are face to face. We're going to do some um, some review sessions this way so everybody can be together and we can kind of be one great big happy class. I do ask that when we are in Google Meet or Zoom that your microphones are always muted and that you keep your, keep your cameras on. Um, last year I noticed towards the end of the semester um, students would just, it was like a whole screen of just little little black boxes with names on them and so um, and I like to see you. So you'll keep your camera on, you'll keep your microphone muted. If you do have to step away from the computer, maybe to go to the restroom or something like that, just close your camera and then return real quickly. And then if you need to speak, we'll use the raise hand function. So those are just some classroom rules and I'm sure we'll have to go back over a few of those. Now, I'm a very procedural person um, to a fault almost. And these are some of my procedures. Now, you're gonna have to bear with me. Um, some of these are new to me. Um, I've kind of done things the same way for you know several years. And uh, this year has kind of changed every way that I go about doing things. So I'm sure that I'm gonna have to alter some things here or there and I'll go back in and change them as we need to. So um, first big one for you face-to-facers, um, don't enter the classroom until I open the door and let you in. Um, this is because we're going to make sure tables are wiped down and that I've sprayed the room with Lysol before you walk in. You need to keep your mask on your face 
until the tardy bell rings. So come in, have a seat, keep your mask on, and then once the tardy bell rings, I'll say you can take your mask off, and then you can do that. That's just because there's probably going to be a little more movement during that little time period than there will be any other time. Um, when you enter the classroom, you're going to find a table right under my smart board and on that table you're going to find a, a bottle of hand sanitizer please be sure that you use that um, as you you know walk in so that way you know you're good and sanitized and then on the board i keep an agenda it tells you what we're covering that day assignments that are coming up things like that so that that way you can see what's happening jot down important dates in your planner and we're going to talk about planners in just a few minutes um i am encouraging all of my students to go paperless this year um, we're going to try to do as many of our worksheets as we possibly can through Google Classroom and Google Forms. So it just makes it a little bit easier for me grading and then you will have a, a better access to them. So that in the event that we have to go home, you can. But paper assignments will still be available to you. I do need to tell you that if you hand in a paper assignment, it may be graded a little bit later just because I have to give those a few hours to sit before I'm allowed to touch them, okay? Now, this is probably one of my biggest changes to my class, and it's probably something different that you've never seen in any other classes. So let's say that you're coming to AMP and you had a worksheet that was due today. Um, for some of you, you may have opted to do it on Google Classroom and you've already submitted, but some of you have got a paper copy and you want to turn it in. Before you walk in my class, that assignment needs to be in your hand with your name on it. Because when you walk in the classroom, you're gonna drop your assignment, get your hand sanitizer and go and have a seat. Students are not gonna be allowed to go to their seat, get their assignment, then walk back up and turn it in. I want to try to keep the flow of traffic as smooth as possible so students can go straight to their seat, get where they need to be, and then they can turn in stuff and not have a bunch of people walking around, okay? So let's make sure we turn it in, hand sanitize, have a seat, stay put until time to leave. Okay, so absences. Let's talk how I handle absences. So if you're absent, um, there's, there's two things you need to know. One, excused absences. Um, now I enforce the absence policy very, very strictly. And that is because I can't stand makeup work. It's one of my least favorite things to do. It just kind of throws me all off. But I do know that we have to miss from time to time. I do know that we get sick. And so I go by the policy, which means that you have one day per absence plus an additional day. So let's say the little Susie misses school Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And in this case, I put it on a hybrid um, thing, but let's say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That means when she comes back to school, she has Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. So all of her assignments are due on Tuesday, okay? So you just need to make sure that you follow that. Now, I did put it in here as a hybrid, and it kind of explains. So in the event we go to a hybrid situation, you can see how we will handle that as well. It is very, very, very important that if you are absent, that some Someone calls in for you to get your excuse, okay? Your excused absence. You get two call-ins each nine weeks. So if you have to miss, make sure someone calls in for you. And if you have to miss and have a doctor's note, take that immediately to the office upon your return, okay? Unexcused absences, I do not accept any work. Now you will have access to the lectures via the YouTube channel, all the handouts via Google Classroom, so you should be able to easily collect all of your missed work. If you need to make up an assignment with me and you don't know how to get to it, you come and talk to me and I'll be glad to help you out so that we can get you caught up. But once again, you are responsible for your missed work. So if you miss one day, when you come back, that means you have two days to get everything done. And I'm gonna be real quiet because I don't like to grade makeup work, okay? So you need to be responsible for getting all of your stuff turned in. 
All right, um, lab exercises are part of the curriculum. However, we're gonna have to do some modifications because of COVID-19. I'm working on those things right now. If you have to miss a lab assignment, you will be given an alternative assignment to complete in lieu of that assignment. So you don't get just a no grade or an, an NM. It means that you have to complete something or it's gonna go down as a zero. Um, I expect students to do all of their own work at all times. Cheating is not tolerated. I know that I've been teaching this stuff for a long time, and I know that some of my worksheets are out there, and I'm aware of that. Most of the time, I don't even take grades on some of that stuff. Most of it's just there for you. The only person that you hurt when you cheat is yourself. Um, I found that students who do their own work, do the reading, do the worksheets, they are much more likely to be successful in the class. So let's look at some virtual learning, distance learning um, um, pro procedures. So um, just because we're not having traditional class, it does not mean that we're not having class. So if you are on a hybrid scenario, um, let's just say that we, we end up having to go to a hybrid, it just means that you'll get your assignments on the face-to-face -face day and you will do your assignments on the virtual learning or distance learning day. Okay, if you are doing full on virtual, you will have a deadline posted for every single assignment, what needs to be turned in, what's going to be graded. Um, please understand that these assignments have a firm deadline. So if you have a technology issue, you have to let me know 30 minutes before, which is teaching you to be responsible and not wait until the last minute to get things turned in. Okay, that's very, very, very important. Um, virtual assignments are going to be things like videos, virtual labs, worksheets, quizzes, projects, current events, all of those be turned in. And just like in our face-to-face -face class, cheating is not tolerated and we will follow the same protocol. So how you're graded, um, daily work is 20%, uh, major grades are 60%, the exam is comprehensive, means it covers everything, and it is 20%. Um, just so that you know, I have a little saying, everything is fair game. When it's test time, anything that we have discussed in class has been in a lecture, been on a video, been in a worksheet or a reading, you may see questions that come from it. So make sure that you don't just study your notes, you study everything. So these are the topics that we covered in AMP. Um, I get these from our College and Career Readiness Standards from the State Department. Um, these are the units in the order that we will cover them. Um, when we get to Unit 8, uh, things kind of change up a little bit, 8, 9, 10, 11, depending on uh, the lab's availability for dissections. So it's very possible that we may move the CAT dissection up, but we try to cover 11 units. Sometimes we only get nine. It just depends on the semester and uh, what all we do in class. Um, also, I usually ask students for their um, input on some of these last units to see what you would really like to learn so that we can make sure that whatever I teach is something that you're going to enjoy. There are two recurring assignments. One is vocabulary. I am a stickler for vocabulary. I tell students that you don't have to be smart, but you can sound smart. And vocabulary is the way to do that. Vocabulary just helps you in every possible aspect of your life. It makes you better at speaking. It makes you better with reading. It even improves math scores. Vocabulary is key to a student being successful. And if you're a reader, you probably have a great vocabulary, but some of you are not readers, and so I force you to learn vocabulary. Um, in this class, we get 10 vocabulary words a week. And then the next week on that Monday, we take a vocabulary quiz on those words, plus any additional words we've had before that, meaning the vocabulary quizzes are comprehensive. So today you get two words, or first day of class you get two words, second day of class you get two words, third day you get two words. So the end of five days of class, you have 10 words, and then we'll take a little short quiz that Monday on those 10 words. And then the next week, you'll have 20 words at the end of the two weeks, and so you'll take a quiz, but the quizzes are usually never more than eight to 10 questions, so you never know which eight to 10 vocabulary words I'm going to quiz you on. So it's just best to go ahead and learn them. Um, I suggest for students with vocabulary that you make flashcards. Flashcards tend to be the way that students learn vocabulary the best. And so you can write them down in a flashcard as soon as you walk in, 
and that will keep you from um, having to write them on a piece of paper and a flashcard. But you could just go ahead and have your little flashcard box and go ahead and start um, putting them in there. Um, current events are also another one of our recurring assignments. Current events are due every other Friday, and I'll tell you when your first one will be due coming up soon. Um, I have a format of how you do the current event, and um, just know that this is one that you will see often. They count as one minor grade, and it's just basically a current event on something with health or medicine. And right now, you've got tons of material with COVID. All right, so for this class, you are going to need a binder with loose paper, planner, color pencils, $15 lab fee. You're also going to need index cards, lots of index cards. I'd go ahead and grab me a couple packs of them. And I have this blank here because um, each class is usually um, assigned some different kind of product that's needed for the lab, but we have not gotten that list together yet. So as soon as, that I, as, soon as I have that, I will let you know. Uh, what we need you to bring in. Typically, it's like paper towels or Clorox wipes or Kleenex. And I know some of that stuff is kind of hard to come by. So we will talk about that um, in class or you can email me and I can let you know specifically. So as you can see, it's really easy to get a hold of me. I've got a lot of contact information here. Um, email is a fantastic way to get a hold of me because usually when I get my email, um, until I have answered the email, it stays in my inbox, and so it kind of keeps me and reminds me that I need to, to get a hold of you. Um, you can also text me at Remind. Um, everyone needs to sign up for the Remind uh, text, so you just type 81010 as a, the number, and in the message box, put at 410A and P, and then you're signed up. Um, we will be using Google Classroom, and this is our Google Classroom code, and I will show you how to do that in another video so that you can get joined up. We also have a class website, which is super nice. Um, let me pull that up for you. The class website um, will take you right here to AMP, and as you can see, it tells me everything that's going to be happening in class for the first unit. So I try to keep this updated pretty um, well. It's kind of an obsession, so you can go there and check that out. I am off fourth block, but I don't typically use my planning period for tutorial or for extra help um, unless it's just kind of one of those weird situations. This is when I am available. Available. I call these my office hours and tutorial hours because some of y'all are going to be virtual, some of you are going to be face to face. So Monday and Thursday from 2 to 3.30 I will be available um, for help and then Tuesdays and Wednesdays before school I'm available to help. Um, I do have one thing before you show up for a tutorial session, I need to know that you're coming um, because if no one says they're coming, then I schedule other things. But if you're coming, then I've got that time blocked off for you. And, uh, and also it gives me a chance to see what we need to work on. So I can go ahead and pull materials, have resources ready so we don't waste any time, okay? So those are my office hours or tutorial hours. Um, I just want to point out that this is going to look differently. Um, we could see anything happen um, in the next few months, but I promise you that whatever the situation, um, I'm going to give you 100%. I'm going to work really hard to make sure that you learn AMP so that when you leave high school, you can walk into an AMP class and you feel very um, secure in what you know, confident in what you know. So um, I'm here to help you and I just need you to give back to me so we can make sure that this is a successful semester. I'm looking forward to it. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or shoot me a text and I'll be glad to help you out. See you in the next video.